It's here. The Open Spot 2 by Shark RF. The place to come for amateur radio videos. Yes, friends, it has finally arrived. The wait is over. You are watching Ham Radio Concepts. I am KJ4YZI, and this is a video about the Open Spot 2 from Shark RF. Now, to some of you, this may be new news. To others, you've been talking about this on D-Star Reflectors for some time. I've heard a lot of people anticipating the release of this, and I myself have been pretty excited about it. Shark RF with the original Open Spot really hit home. They did a great job on it. It was a hotspot that required almost no setup, didn't involve any SD cards, and just always worked. It was their own proprietary operating system, their own hardware, and they just really did a good job. And they haven't failed us again. The Open Spot 2 is a completely redesigned hotspot, which gives you all the stuff that you want in your current hotspot. But guess what? In 2018, at this point, what we've come around to is we want all these features, but now we want it easy to use. That's the motive in the latest few months of a hotspot is, is it easy to set up? And actually, this is a no-brainer. This thing comes almost ready to go. And... At this point, I think now it's official I could sell my rugged spot because this thing is just old news and it's really not as portable. We're going to show you exactly how nice and compact this thing is. Introducing the open spot too. This thing is very, very thin, very light. Look at it. It's very just, very, I mean, the, the digital ham world in your pocket has beautiful meaning to this because it just slips right into your pocket as the picture suggests all right no antennas to break off no sd cards to have to format and program no emailing the developer or the creator or the person on ebay you bought it from that's a clone of another one that says hey i got mine and mine has a different operating system than this one no if you have an open spot too and your buddy has an open spot too next to it you're both running the same open spot too okay these are their own design and really just, it's, it's that easy. So I have not configured this yet, but I did unpack it just to look at what came in the box. I wanted to do it with you guys, but I was so eager to see. They do give you a couple handy dandy Shark RF stickers that you can place on your wife's window in the car so she can constantly look at it or wherever you want to put it. We also have in here, now... The man, I'm going to tell you, there's no manual in here. Let's save some trees. Let's save some paper. The manual is available online. And after this video, hopefully you won't need the manual. But if you do, the links are in the description below. So the uh, USB to wall wart adapter. Now, this comes with several different adapters here for your country. One, two, three, four. For. So depending on the country you live in and the outlet that you have, you can choose the one that you need and it just basically clips right on like this and away you go. You plug your USB in the bottom. This does come with a two-year warranty. And with that said, they do highly recommend you use only the appropriate battery uh, adapter here or a power adapter here. Or if you're going to use a computer or battery bank, fine. But Guys, there's a lot of these. These, are, these come with every single thing you purchase now. They're a dime a dozen, and they're coming from China. And there's some of them. This is rated at 5 volt, 1 amp. But there's some of them that say that, and they come out 6 volts or 5 amps or whatever. You don't want to damage your open spot, too, with that. So make sure you use the appropriate one that comes with it or uh, a computer USB port. And also, they give you a USB-C cable. Okay, so they chose to use a USB-C port on the device, uh, and that's the new standard. I was corrected on a previous video when I didn't know exactly what that was, but you guys taught me, so I thank you. You remember the first one had an Ethernet port on it, and the big question or big thing with that was, when will they have a Wi-Fi version? Well, here it is, and you don't need an Ethernet port to set this thing up. 
It's just as easy to set it up a Wi-Fi, and I'll show you that now. So the Shark RF Open Spot 2 hardware and operating system is designed to boot extremely fast. Watch this. When you plug this in, watch how fast you get a light on this thing. You'll see the lights flashing through the cover. It's already in access point mode. It is transmitting an access point to which you're going to use a device. We're going to put this right here so you can see them both at the same time. You're going to use a device like your phone or uh, something with a uh, uh, Wi-Fi to connect to it. You know, in, in this day and age, everybody's using their uh, hotspots mobile in the vehicle, and they have it tethered to their phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use my iPhone here, if I can get that in camera. Okay, so you can see my, my Wi-Fi there called garbage, and then I have an extender there, but there's also the open spot to access point. It's an unsecured uh, um, access point. Tap on it, it's going to connect your phone to the Wi-Fi that's broadcasting from the open spot too. Once you get it connected, and it's connected to your Wi-Fi, you're going to go to a web browser here, and you're going to type in openspot2.local. And you can see here, it's going to bring you to the main configuration page. That's openspot2.local for the address. And now you're in Wi-Fi setup mode. So very simply, just click on Next for whatever country you're in. Now you're going to go down here, and you're going to search. It's scanning for Wi-Fi. You're going to search for your Wi-Fi network to connect to. Mine is called Garbage. I'm going to connect to it. I'm going to type in my password. If you knew what my password was, you would laugh. Okay. Now connecting to the Wi-Fi. And once it's connected to Wi-Fi, you can finish your setup on a computer or a tablet. Anything that's on the same Wi-Fi network as, and notice the lights over here. You see what it's doing? Lights are changing colors. It's connecting. It's doing its thing. That means it's connecting to the open spot. It's connecting to Wi-Fi. And now I could finish my setup here on the, uh, the phone because now it's jumping on Wi-Fi. And then my phone's going to jump back on Wi-Fi. And we can do it this way. But for the sake of the video, I'll connect to a web browser on my computer and show you the setup from there. So open a web browser that's on a computer or device that's connected to the same Wi-Fi that the open spot's connected to. Type in openspot2.local. It's going to take you to the setup page. It doesn't make it any easier than this. Okay. Owner information. So put the call sign in, your call sign. And you can see here it pops up with the automatic DMR ID. Now that ID is related to this, but we're not going to explain why I have a different one. That's my ID, okay? And I don't have an NXDN ID, so we're going to hit save. Now the next quick setup. Please select the type of your radio. So you have DMR, D-Star, C4FM, NXDN, P25, and what in the heck is Poxag? I got to check that out. But anyways, uh, we're going to do just DMR, for instance, okay, and show you. Now, the radio frequency, that's the frequency of the hotspot that you're going to set, and then you're going to appropriately program your radio to match this frequency. So keep in mind, this frequency has to be on a legitimate frequency in the band plan. You can't have it on a repeater output. You can't have it in the middle of the simplex. You can't have it on a satellite downlink. So we'll pick this for now, but use a frequency that is acceptable for hotspot use. Uh, and then you have different networks. Do you want Brandmeister? Do you want DMR Mark? Do you want FCS? So you can go DMR to Yesu System Fusion. Uh, we'll just go Brandmeister for now. Now the server, you want to pick a server that's close to you. Um, normally I pick uh, United States. You know, there's a server there. I think that's Central U.S. And uh, it's got the rest of it already in there. So you click, uh, you can go right here. And click the Brandmeister talk group that you would like it to link to upon uh, boot up. So I'll just pick TAC310 and we'll hit connect. Now at this point, it's going to pull up the status. It shows you right here. It just linked. It gave an announcement on the radio, which you didn't hear because I don't have a radio on my desk. But it transmits and it says connected. Um, and uh, there's uh, somebody here on the uh, TAC310 now. So it's got a status page. That's familiar from the previous open spot. And it shows you down here um, the other uh, you know settings that you have here. You're connected and all that. All right, so let's go back and let's go to C4FM. So in C4FM, you pick the radio frequency of the hotspot. 
and your radio deviation mode, normal or half deviation. Uh, normal would be uh, the full 12 kilohertz wide on digital. And then again, which C4 FM network do you want? Do you want FCS? Do you want uh, YSF reflector or Fusion to Brandmeister or DMR Mark or XLX reflectors on D Star? So you have cross linking right here on hardware. So for the sake of the video, we will pick FCS and uh, the server room number. Now at this time, you cannot connect to wires X on the open spot too. This is not a limitation of the open spot. It is a limitation the fact of Yesu does not want you to connect to wires X with hotspots because they would never sell their HRI 200. So it's not the open spot. It's wires X and Yesu that won't let the technology out. Someone will figure it out eventually. But uh, we'll pick, um, I don't know, where's America Lincoln? 90? I think it's, uh, or, let's see. There's so many of these different things. Here, America Link, FCS 090, my DMR ID call sign, and connect. And look, it puts you right on there. That's it. Now, remember, guys, you don't have to go into the hotspot and change this every time. You do it one time in here. This is where it is connected to. And then you change all that from the radio. Okay? So you use your radio to change, change reflectors and DMR talk groups and such. Um, you, know, you don't have to log in and do it every time this way. Uh, we'll go back to quick setup, and we go, uh, I don't know about these, we'll go to D-Star, and we click on, uh, see, you have gateway, DCS or XLX reflectors, or REF, you know, reflector or X reflectors. I'll click that, we'll leave the frequency alone, we'll go to the server, we'll pick, uh, I don't know, 30 Charlie, right, module C, and you leave the server there and everything. Remember, don't forget to set your radios, your call to CQCQ, and you hit connect, it's that easy. We'll leave the status page and we'll go up here to, this is familiar from the previous open spot. We'll go to connectors and right here you can change the active connector. Your connector is where or what mode you're on basically. So I can go like this and I can say, well, I want to go back to System Fusion, FCS, switch to selected. That's it. It changes it to Fusion. That's simple. Now, the open spot compared to PyStar doesn't, you can't run four different modes and have it scan it. But you know what? On all the PyStar hotspots I had, I never did that because that was so annoying. When I'm having a conversation on DStar and someone would key up on DMR when there's a pause in our conversation and it switches me. The open spot is not like that. And I like, and I like it this way. You can just pick one connector or one established mode and leave it there. So now that I'm on FCS or Fusion, I can go over here and modify whatever I want, hit save. Okay, or I can click this and I can go to, uh, you know, Poxag or whatever. Now, apparently, uh, reading this during the video, these that are grayed out are not supported yet. So I guess they have to add these in future firmwares, which they have the opportunity or the, the uh, they have it where they can do it with a firmware. They just haven't done it yet. They wanted to really, this is the most used, D-Star, Fusion, and DMR. Uh, but they can do that with just the uh, uh, firmware update. So if I want to go back to uh, uh, you know D-Star, I click this and hit switch. That's it. Switches it right to D-Star. If I go up to modem, so um, you know, kind of redundant. You have your uh, frequency. If you just wanted to, instead of going through quick setup, you just go to the modem page and you can change the active modem and then the frequency. Um, you know, and the transmit power. Now look, the transmit power on the open spot one and the open spot two is 20 milliwatts. That is double the power output of the Pi Star and the Jumbo Spot and the Rugged Spot and all those. Um, will 10 more milliwatts do you any good? I believe it will because there's a lot of people that I've heard talking and seen videos where they want to get range to the other end of the house, a big house on a farm, and they just can't the shed out back. You're doubling your power, essentially, and doubling your power, you know, from 10 to 12 milliwatts won't make a difference, but 10 to 20 does. Um, so you can dial it down. For me, I'm going to turn this down to mm, 5 milliwatts because I don't need all that power because usually it's in the vehicle with me. So save the power, dial it down. If you got it positioned in your house all the time and you know, you're constantly roaming the house, leaving it up on 20 milliwatts if you want. I never really need to run it that high. So uh, CW ID, if you want to enable that, so it IDs over the uh, the radio, okay? And then we go to uh, settings, and settings, you know, you could do different profiles in here. Um, 
so that if you wanted to change profiles for different users, you can do that. And if we switch to the network tab, it'll show you, you know, you're connected, the RSSI or the received signal strength indicator, negative 50 dBm. It's a good signal. Uh, it tells you your quality here and uh, your IP addresses and your traffic. So it gives you the traffic of your, um, which could be useful for seeing how much data you're actually using in a month. You know, so you can reset your counter um, and start for a month and see exactly how much data you use when you're using this thing every day in the vehicle and kind of get an idea of how much you're taking off your data plan. But I know it's not much. I've never went over data on mine, um, mobile on a hotspot. So uh, you could also, if you wanted to add additional, if you wanted to add additional Wi-Fi SSIDs so that you can go to, you know, different uh, houses or your phone hotspot or your home hotspot, you can add other ones. If I click this, I would add the um, the uh, password, which I don't want to do because it'll jump back and forth here, but you can add it and then you'll have uh, multiple networks. So when you go in your house, it comes on. When you're in your vehicle on your phone, it comes on and uh, that's that. Your user manual, the link right here uh, takes you right to the manual page, which I also put in the link of the description. And it tells you exactly about everything here. Um, they do a good job on writing a the manual. There is no, uh, you know, lost translations. I mean, everything is really good when you read the manual. It's very easy. Hopefully this video makes it to where you don't need a manual. So another cool feature of this thing, the Shark RF link. So if you click on Shark RF link, what this enables you is to link your Shark RF open spot two directly to another one. Um, so you, <laughs> there's it's some cool stuff. Check it out. If you remember, we go here to say DMR, and then right here you have Shark RF IP connector client and server. So there are ways, um, and I'm not the expert at it, but the manual, if we click right here on user manual, okay, it'll bring you to their manual, which you can go down here to Shark RF IP connector. You can use this connector to directly connect to another open spot, open spot two, or a network which supports the Shark RF IP connector protocol or our open source Shark RF IP connector protocol server. So the documentation is on GitHub. You could also develop your own application for the open spot too. So that's pretty cool. I can see guys already that are smarter than I am that'll be doing this and linking from one to the other. Maybe that's the solution from linking open spot to open spot to bridge from one repeater network to another in your neighborhood or your repeater council. I don't know. But there's, or you want to talk to your buddy up north and you just want to link open spots together, you can do it this way. I haven't uh, played with that yet, and I don't think this was a feature in part one of open spot, but um, definitely the uh, option exists. So the LED light on the top of the unit tells you a few things. You know, you can see it's red there when it's transmitting. It's, uh, you know, different colors. It's, it's uh, the, the same uh, what you saw before, slow fade on, slow fade off as a, a white color for access point mode. And when you're connected to the open spot, it flashes one way. And when you're receiving, it's another. So the LED light uh, has a few different meanings and it looks cool. I like the the readout of the uh, status messages. For instance, this is trying to connect to the Wi-Fi right now that's in my house, which may not be reaching. But check it out. If I transmit, so I have... Open spot trying to connect Wi-Fi network. So you can hear it saying open spot trying to connect Wi-Fi network. So I'll connect it to my Wi-Fi on my phone. Yeah, uh, I was saying that uh, I love your videos. I show them at our club meetings here in Memphis at the Memphis Digital Amateur Radio Club. Uh, group and I picked up a uh, radio tone RT4 uh, radio based on your videos for the network deal and that will wait about four or five days for an ID so I can get access to the RN network and uh, I was just wondering if you knew how long it takes for those guys to respond. Thank you for that information. Have a good night and 7-3 to you 2BSM. We'll be clear. 7-3, KJ4YZI. So let's play a little C4FM. A little bit different than the Pi Star. Um, on the Pi Star, I could use the Wires X button to connect, and not connect to Wires X, but the functionality. So this one, you could use DTMF codes to change rooms. So if I wanted to go to America Link, 
That'd be Reflector 1, Room 90, I believe. So I can key up and dial in DTMF. Star 90. And that should be America Link. And then, uh, you know, you can dial in DTMF codes. Um, the, right now it's preset to star and then the, the number. KJ4YZI testing. Sound good on this side. Well, hello, Russell, KV4S, KJ4YZI. Yeah, I'm just playing. I, I got the uh, open spot, too, and uh, was uh, refreshing myself again on the fusion functionality of it. But I appear to have it working. Over. Prices, Russell. <laughs> Seven three, buddy. Let me get back to it. KJ four YZI. All right, so this about wraps it up. It's getting a little lengthy, but you get the idea on the open spot too. So, I have one thing to note here. Um, it's a great device being slim, having Wi-Fi, having the ease of setting this thing up. And the only thing is, I've gotten so used to the, the Pi Star functionality that this is a little bit different. Um, when you're talking about linking reflectors with D-Star, you don't have to worry about all the settings that you do with Pi-Star, a jumbo spot, whatever. You don't have to have a RPT-1 or RPT-2 in your radio and a, a whole, you know, the, the way you program a radio for a Pi-Star setup is a little bit more in-depth than this. This uses, I mean, you don't have to worry about RPT-1, PT, uh, RPT-2. And, um, you know, the way the spacing is for the the uh, your call is uh, very important so you got to read on the manual on that because the reason i say this is because i i answer a lot of questions every month and they're just getting to be where i can't answer them all so i want you to read through the manual if you're new to a hot spot it may not be so bad for you if you are used to a jumbo spot or a zoom spot for all these years and you want to go to this it may be a little bit different but it doesn't mean it's bad so uh, try your hardest to go on the community forums to read any questions you have on this or any issues or any, hey, how do I do this, you know? Um, and the same thing for the wires X functionality. Uh, I usually, on a Pi Star, I push the wires button, it comes back, I can scroll through, request a list, you know, hit all, like I showed you in a previous video, and find a reflector I want and hit connect. This one, you do it through DTMF tones. Um, so, uh, one way, you know, one way this way, one way that way, but... Uh, it just depends on what you like or what you want to do. Some people don't like to switch. They leave it on Alabama link, and that's fine. You can do it right. It's just as easy, too, to do it from your, uh, your iPhone as well or your Android, whatever. Logging on to the Wi-Fi, this thing will be tethered to it, and you connect to the OpenSpot dashboard and link it that way. That's, I think, originally how it's designed primarily. But the people that want to use it to link from the radio face without using a browser um, – is a little bit different than what you're used to with a Pi Star. Other than that, it's a great device. It, you know, it, it's kind of hard to say. Is this thing sounding good? It works just like any other hotspot. You can't really notice a the difference. There was no real issues with anybody telling me I had any problems. It's just the functionality of it. But the open spot too. Uh, check out the links in the description for uh, manuals and stuff, and uh, any other information I can put in there will be in the description. Thanks for watching. As always, leave your comments below on what you think. 7-3, thanks for watching. From KJ4YZI.